bless you and praise the Lord, everybody. We thank God for you joining us today. It's Tuesday, and we're excited because it is Bible class, and we pray that the new year has been good to you. It's hard to believe that we're already in the second week of January. Hear me when I say 2023 is not waiting for anybody, but that's all right because we have great expectation, and we're believing God for great things. So again, thank you for joining us. We hope that you had a productive day or at least you were able to check off one of your to-do items. And so now we want you to get ready, grab your Bibles, grab your study items, your notepad, because we're going to go deeper into the Word of God. But before we do that, we do want to go before the presence of the Lord and to invite him into this place, but also into your home throughout this study. So let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you on tonight. We thank you for how you've been so wonderful and so kind to us. We thank you, Lord God, how you have watched over us. We also praise you, O oh God, for your sustaining power. Lord, you've kept our hearts. Lord, you've kept our minds, Father. And Lord, we have this hope, Lord, that is in you. We believe, O oh God, that great things are coming our way. Lord God, that great things will take place in our homes. Lord, in our lives, but also in the ministry, Lord God, we have great expectation. We say, uh, do it, Lord, in Jesus' name. And Lord God, work through us, Father, that we can draw somebody, Lord God, and cause them to be saved. We ask you to bless the word of God on tonight. Lord, have free course in the sanctuary. Bless those who are tuning in in their homes. Lord God, do great things for them as well. We praise you, God. We magnify you on this evening. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said, amen, amen. and amen. amen. So God bless you on tonight. Um, as for those who tune in, you know that if you have a prayer request, you're more than welcome to go ahead and submit your prayer request online. Submit your request online, and then we'll make sure your prayer request, it gets to the appropriate team because we believe in prayer. Then also we want to make sure that you're participating with us. We want you engage, engage, engage. If you hear something good, please most definitely put it in the comment section. Greet your brothers and sisters in Christ. Tag somebody and tell them, amen, join in. This is going to bless you. So God bless you in the name of the Lord. If you have a question, don't be afraid to submit your question, and we'll make sure that it gets to the pastor. So again, welcome in the name of the Lord. Get ready. It's time for the word of God. God bless you, pastor. It's in your hands. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Evangelist Giovanni, welcome everyone to our Bible session on tonight. We are not going to... Uh, delay the time. We're going right into our lesson. We are in chapter 1 of 1 Corinthians. Uh, we are down to the 23rd verse. Amen. And we are talking about the admonition of the Apostle Paul uh, to this Corinthian church, giving them direction on how to stand in God's word. And I think this is so appropriate for the body of Christ uh, because there is a tendency to forget or to overlook what really is our foundation. And once we get set up on the foundation, we are not to deviate. We are not to go back into what that uh, the Lord delivered us from. And with our human emotions, we are very vulnerable to those behavior patterns. But we are learning how to walk by faith and not by sight. So what uh, the Apostle Paul is speaking here of, uh, starting at verse number 23, he says, But we preach Christ crucified. We preach Christ crucified 
unto the Jews a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks foolishness. Amen. The stumbling block. Hallelujah. How could the word of God become a stumbling block? We have to be able to, deter, uh, to discern the times that we're living in. We have to be led and guided by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And not get trapped of trusting into the world's method of operating. So we are living in trying time. Please understand when Jesus arrived, he was on a mission. And his mission was to set up the kingdom of David that God had promised that he was going to establish a throne and that Israel was going to be the head of the nations. And that's how he was going to glorify the rest of the world. We also must realize that they are in bondage now in the midst of the Roman Empire. This is the fourth nations that they have been under servitude to because of their rebellion, because of their disobedience, because of their unbelief. They are in a backslidden state and their backslidden state caused them not to be sensitive to accept the fulfillment of the promise that Jesus came to install. Hallelujah. So he is telling them, you misunderstood and you're judging me inappropriately because you don't really see who I really am. I came not to destroy the law and the prophets. I came to fulfill, which means I came to complete it. And to let you know that the law was never intended to make you perfect. It didn't have that ability. It was an initiation of a strategy of salvation that had not yet come into fruition. It, it was not completed. I'm on the assignment to complete the law, to fulfill all of its requirements and remove it out of the way that you can see my Father who dwells in heaven. And Sunday we talked about Jesus letting it be known. If you see me talking about himself, you should have seen my father. For my father and I are one. Amen. So we came, I came, he sent me to salvage you, to bring him under the umbrella of security. Amen. That's why I'm here. And if you would cease to be uh, being stout-hearted and become sensitive to the leading of the word, 
also to the leading of my spirit, then you would be endowed with that that is necessary to keep you where you are. And that's here in the world. Please know that we are in the world, but we're not of the world. And also pulling on Sunday's message, I said, if you were paying attention, that where the Spirit of the Lord God is, there's liberty. And some of us get so caught up in our strategies, we want to go to heaven. But honey, it has been arranged that we can have heaven here on earth. Hello? Amen. Yes, the world is still going through turmoil, but those who have been endowed with the power have the presence, the essence of God every day when we wake up, God's here. He's not only here when we wake up, but he's here when we go to sleep. Amen? And as we put our trust in that, I, I watch the news to get the information that they publicize. But if you don't have your spirit stirred, that news will tear you up. If your faith is not bigger than the news, you ought not be looking at the news. Because it can stifle what you profess to believe. Because it looks like the world is unreconcilable. Uh, I, I put that BLE in there. It looks like there's no hope. And it is. That's correct. There is no hope for those who reject God's counsel. But the, the, the believer shall be delivered. I repeat, the believer shall be delivered. And we have to learn how to walk by faith. Hello? Is anybody there? We are in the process of learning how to walk by faith. So now we're talking about two things. One is wisdom that's the Greek the world is looking for knowledge wisdom understanding we we have a huge mindset in our institutions we're pushing everybody to get their credentials, their degrees. And you'll become Dr. It and Dr. Somebody and Dr. So-and-so. And if you're not careful, you will think you got it made. That's the wisdom of the world. And then, before we get to the wisdom of the world, uh, and they put that in the Greek category because they were, they were big on knowledge and information. Every day they were entertaining something new. Ah, they were always trying to learn something according to the world standard. But here it also talks about uh, the stumbling block. Are y'all familiar with the stumbling block? Mm, well, if we go back to the book of Judges, chapter number seven, and then we also try to connect that with uh, Matthew, the 16th chapter, we will see the difference between how God dealt with these 
the same position. In Judges, God allowed Gideon to ask for a sign. Do you remember what the sign was that he asked for? God appeared before Gideon and told him that I was going to deliver you. I was going to deliver Israel through you. And he said, how can you do that? We, we're, we're in plunder. People are just coming and taking our food storages and all that stuff. And, 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 and everything that we've been taught about in the word of God, <laughs> it's in the background. And, and I'm a nobody in my house. How are you going to use me? And if you're really talking to me, I need you to give me a sign. And don't get angry with me, Lord. I said, now, but if this is really you, I would like for you to take, do, do you see this cotton? <laughs> I would like for you to take this cotton and just saturate it with moisture. And I only want that cotton to be wet, but everything around it, I want it to be dry. And the following day he came and that's exactly what took place. The cotton was wet and around it the ground was dry. And he still was not convinced. He said, okay, Lord, don't be angry with me, but if you, but if you made the cotton wet and the, grad, the, and the ground dry, this time, I want you to make the ground wet and the cotton dry. <laughs> Went on into the next day and came back, and that is exactly what the way it was. To make a, s a long story short, then God tolerated him <coughs> in his mindset. Hello? But when you get over into the New Testament, starting at uh, chapter number 16, we find that the children of Israel being rebuked, trying to do the same thing that Gideon had done. He said, no, no, we don't operate that way anymore. This is a new day. Listen, listen to... Uh, uh, what Jesus told those would-be disciples in Matthew, the 16th chapter, beginning at verse number 1. He says, The Pharisees also with the Sadduce uh, Sadducees came, tempting, uh, and uh, let me repeat that again, the Pharisees also with the Sadducees came and tempting desired him that he would show them a sign from heaven. Verse 2 said, He answered and said unto them, When it is evening, ye say, I will be, uh, it will be fair weather, for the sky is red. Verse 3 say, and in the morning it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. But the second phase of that uh, verse, the B uh, stage, it says, O ye hypocrites, ye can discern the face of the sky. But can you not discern the signs of the times? A wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. And there shall no sign be given unto it, but the sign of the prophet Jonas. And he left them and departed. Now, what is the sign of Jonas? Jonas. Jonah. In the last days, saith God, I'm going to pour my spirit out upon all flesh. 
and your sons are going to prophesy. That's not what it says. It said your sons and your daughters are going to prophesy. Your old men are going to dream dreams and your young men are going to see visions. Mm. What's happening here, y'all? He said, I'm going to give you some direct instructions. In words, I've, you've been taught the word of God by the prophets, by the holy men of God. But they're teaching you about me. And what's going to happen is when I come, I'm going to get in you. And I'm going to convey to you that this is what I've already proclaimed in days gone by. Okay. And that's exactly what uh, the apostle Peter did on in Acts 2.38 when they said these men are drunk on some kind of new wine. Peter stood up and said these men are not drunk as ye suppose. But this is that that was prophesied by the prophet Jonah declaring that in the last days, these are the last days. I'm here to let you know that peerless times have come. They're here now. We must understand that Jesus Christ is the only hope that the world has. Because the world is in turmoil. It's in a mess. It has no idea what it is doing. But we have people in leadership with credentials. Philosophers, doctors, lawyers. They hold titles and positions. Senators, governors, mayors, presidents. Ah, all kinds of positions. Yet the world, the country is in chaos. And nobody knows what to do about it. But God does. Now, he says, if you trust me, daily I will show you what to do. Amen. Peter had the power. He recognized the Spirit of God was upon him. And God is saying, I'm going to do you like I did Peter. When you find yourself in a position of stress and duress, you're going to be able to declare, I just received my anointing. The Lord has just illuminated my soul in the midst of my chaos. And I can declare that this is exactly what I need. Ah, uh, says Clarence. <laughs> I got to get through talking about Peter. That was Peter's time. That was Peter's situation. Each and every one of us are going to have our own day. You're going to have your own situation. And you're going to be required to make the same proclamation. This is that that the Lord was speaking of, and he's doing it the exact same thing in me. He's blessing me to be a light of the world. Somebody help me say God has not changed. <laughs> he's still the same right now. And we cannot go into depression. We cannot get confused because the world chooses to be confused. 
And he's saying, you cannot come to my table talking about the wisdom of the world. Can't come over here talking about give me a sign. Uh, because you've already got the sign. Somebody shout hallelujah. Now you have the requirement. You have the awesome responsibility to believe. He that believeth and is baptized, the same shall be saved. I, is, is that right? So then, where is our peace? Where's your peace in the midst of your chaos? Hmm. What is your assignment? What are you instructed to do when chaos come? Somebody need to talk to me in a hurry. What are you what are you instructed to do when chaos come? Do what? I heard it say stand. Y'all agree with that? How do you stand? Said what? So who? When hell's breaking loose, mm, there's a time and a place. What, 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 what are you saying, preacher? Sometime it ain't time to pray. <laughs> mm. Mm. Stand is correct. Prayer is correct. But we have to pray in advance. Saw a hand in the rear. You have to have faith and confidence in what you've prayed for when you're standing. All right. All right. I can eat that. Huh. Faith and confidence. Now, how is that manifested? He took the mic. He took the mic. He took the mic. <laughs> how is that manifested? As, as, a, as a bold statement, and it is a true statement. Hallelujah. By your obedience to the word of God. All right. Yeah, now, now we're approaching, we're approaching, we're approaching uh, the, the crest of the matter. And that is to take the authority. Don't let the devil talk to you. Take the, the authority. And you have to speak to that spirit that's trying to entertain your mind and tell that spirit, peace be still. That's how you're standing. When you confront the opposition and let it know that what you're suggesting is not acceptable over here, peace be still. Wind, stop blowing. Boat, stop rocking. Disciples, stop being unbelievers. Peace, be still. Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. I see sister still waving her hand down here. She got something she want to get out. You got to get out under that. You got to put on the whole armor of God. Uh, all right. The whole armor so that right. you can stand for the devil's altars to, to, to attack you at any time. All right. So stand. Have you done all to stand? Stand. Stand. Stand, and stand some more. Hallelujah. Have you your loins gird yeah. about with, with the, the truth? truth of the of the gospel. Which you keep your, your pants up with. In those days, which you were carrying your sword around with. Hallelujah. Got to have on the breastplate of righteousness. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Have you done all to stand? Stand. 
and let the invader know, the intruder, you cannot function over here because I'm not going to cooperate with you. I have a mind to resist everything that you suggest. Amen? I believe in the word of God. And you can't take my peace away. I'll die first. Is anybody there? That's what the Apostle Paul is trying to relay. And I use the word trying. You know, I I'm not big on that word trying. But I use it here uh, in favor of the Apostle Paul. He cannot make them receive this. He's relaying it with all the spiritual fortitude that he has. But it's up to them to get in the right state of mind to be acceptable. And they have not reached that point because most of them are in the ranks of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. They have already made up their mind even before he began to speak that we are not adopting any of that. Because we're standing on the instructions of the law and the prophets that came by our father Moses. <laughs> not realizing they had no clue. They were advocates of the law Yet they did not comprehend the law. They thought they knew it. But their actions indicated they did not comprehend. And that's what knowledge will do to you. It will make a fool out of you. Sometimes you have to just be still. And when you get still, you'll learn how to be quiet. When the enemy is around, don't make a whole lot of noise. You ever see anybody getting ready to rumble? And one person is saying, I'll do this to you and I'll do that to you. And the other one's being quiet. <laughs> but keep your eye on that quiet one. Because that one making all that noise, if you ain't careful, he's about to go down. Amen? I saw it when I was a kid in school. This little kid used to be around there. Didn't say nothing to nobody. Didn't do nothing to nobody. He was just quiet. And one day, uh, a couple of folk, uh, them little kids went to picking on him. And a homeboy came out of that shell. <laughs> And he just worked on them for a minute. And he wasn't talking. <laughs> I said, wow, I sure, I'm sure glad I didn't mess with him. <laughs> Hallelujah. The devil loves to make a lot of noise. And again, that's what uh, the 13th chapter of this same book tells us. Not to become sounding brasses and tinkling cymbals. Uh, learn what the foundation is in your spiritual makeup. The world's making a lot of noise, but it's accomplishing very little. But the word of God is being completed. And Jesus came in to fulfill his assignment as a sheep. I said he fulfilled his assignment as a sheep. He was meek. He was lowly. 
He got up on the cross willingly. He died. He was buried. He rose from the grave. He ascended upon high. And he's being patient, waiting on the appointed time. He ascended. He came down and gave gifts unto men. But now he's permanently on the right hand of the throne, making intercession for all of us. But when the time comes, When the declaration is made, time shall be no more. Then he's going to come, not as a sheep. He's coming back as a lion. And he's going to be ferocious. And he's going to tear some stuff up. If you look at our decal, that's why we have the lamb in the lion. These are two distinct manifestations of God. And we have to fully appreciate it. But now he's meek and lowly. Now he's gentle. Now he's long-suffering. Now he's patient. But the arrogance of the Pharisees, the arrogance of the Sadducees, thought that they could manipulate who and what he was to their own advantage. Hmm. And the Lord let them know. You're going you're gonna to plot to kill me. And you're going to think you were successful. But you really have no power to take my life. You don't understand. I came to lay my life down. Because I'm God Almighty. In the manifestation, uh, manifestation of things, I also have power to take that life back up. Because I'm God. Hallelujah. And I'm going to complete this process called holiness. We use the term salvation. This strategy will be carried out to its completion, its fulfillment, and According to this 15th chapter, it says that Jesus has got to put all opposition under his feet. And the last enemy that is going to be destroyed is death. And after death has been put under the power of Jesus, this is verse number 28 in chapter number 15. He said, then Jesus himself will come into compliance. And he too will surrender himself unto the will of God. And his fulfillment is simply this. He goes back from being the lamb the Son of God in the complete rotation and going back to being what he always was, God himself. Hmm. He's completing the cycle. And he says, I want to complete my strategy of salvation in each and every one of you if you just trust me. Don't trust the world. Trust me. Trust my love. Trust my, my vision. Trust the power that you've seen me display. Amen. Don't focus on what you're going through. 
How many of y'all going through something? Every now and then, Clarence want to throw his hands up. He said, I just had enough. And the Lord said, keep your hand down, son. Keep your hand down, boy. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't over yet. You ain't through. <laughs> you got some more fighting to do. Mm. Hallelujah. And I got news. Some of y'all prayed. And when you were praying, you were you, you announcing some pretty words. Say so what? Oh, yeah, you, you told God to do some of this stuff that's happening in your life right now. But you didn't understand that when you were down there praying. Oh, you told him to have his way. Ah, there's a time and a place. And sometimes we're asking for the wrong thing at the wrong time. <laughs> but God heard your prayer. And somebody told me he will answer prayer. So he sent something specifically designed for you. But like you went to the tailor. Uh huh. Some of us go try to buy some tailor made clothes and they won't fit because we put on weight. You asked the Lord for something specifically, and he provided it, but it wouldn't fit you because you ain't putting on the, the right weight. Because <laughs> when you put on the weight of God, it'll make you decrease in yourself. How many, how many, how many know we ask, when you pray, you're supposed to be asking the Lord to come in and increase, and you decrease. What are you talking about, preacher? The Lord's the one that carries the weight. The Lord is the one that understands the predicaments that you're going to encounter that you could not foresee when you were down on your knees praying. You asked him to do something, and he said, okay, I hear you. It's coming. And then when it shows up, then we back down on it. He said, no, Lord, I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> that's, what, that's what I told him. But I, said, I, was, uh, uh, I was green. I was inexperienced. I've only been in church six months, maybe a year, and looked like everything failed. On me, and I said, "Lord, this ain't, this ain't fair. You you got me up here trying to preach, and I don't know where Acts two thirty eight is. You know, every uh, apostolic supposed to know Acts two thirty eight. I heard it, but I don't know where to find it. <laughs> Wh what you doing? Oh, I went to complaining." And I did that for years. The Lord comforted me for a while, then I and after I get comforted, I go right back into my complaints in another phase. And the Lord said, Boy, you ain't learned yet. Here's some more tissue. He didn't say I was gonna stop the process. <laughs> Here's some more tissue. <laughs> you, you just keep blowing your nose. <laughs> And it took all them years of blowing my nose to reach today. And look like today the lights 
has come on. I still don't see the end of the journey. I just see where I am. <laughs> How many of y'all know that God's awesome? So then if you heard anything, then you can begin to comprehend what the Apostle Paul is telling uh, this church at Corinth. He said, you're all caught up in this stuff. You're all caught up in your own wisdom. You're all caught up in your own knowledge, your own comprehension. And you really don't know how to walk by faith. So then you're using all of this stuff that you learned in the world, in these institutions, whatever your position may have been. Please understand, we have the Jews under the control of the Roman Empire. You have segment of the Jews who are living under control in slavery. Some of them are living a good life. The Pharisees were living large. The Sadducees were living large. They were practicing the law of the prophets. They had publicans living large. How were they living large? They were ripping off the people. They were supposed to be collecting taxes and paying the, their share of the tribute, but they were keeping some of the money for themselves. Mm. Hallelujah. So for them to get direction, they had to get permission from those who were in control, the governor who was sent over a region by the chief Roman leader, the Caesars. Just like we have a governor over California. And they would call them providences or whatever. We've got how many states in, in, in America now? And we should have 50 governors. But they all should be under the structure of the United States governed by the president and the council, House of Representatives. The Senate. Ah, we got chaos. <laughs> We've got chaos because once you get power, once you get power. How many know that women and men struggle in a house? What are they struggling about? Power. Who's going to run this? <laughs> Sister girl reached on and grabbed her hat. <laughs> it's a struggle. Who's going to have power? Now, we don't visualize it that way, but that's the reality. Who is going to be in control? <laughs> is, is the determined, that, that's what generates the confusion. Uh, so then what we have now, we have a strategy that has been set in place that we are teaching the women that they are independent. Where did it come from? Is it true? Or is it an illusion? Well, the same concept is being taught to the man. You are in control. You the head. You run everything. Is that true? Huh? Y'all look at y'all looking at me. Y'all scared. Y'all scared I'm going to throw a rock at you now. 
Huh? Why is it not true? Okay, that's good. You're following his way. And so everybody has to be submitted to somebody. Um, and if you're not submitted to somebody, that means that you're going on your own whim and, and you have the tendency to go buck wild. Everybody needs to be able to be corrected. So just as the husband, just as the wife, and I was reading um, Ephesians chapter 5 and reading down, and it's really, really good, things I had not seen before. But as she is subject to her husband, the husband is subject to God, and he's responsible to be that protector and that covering, and he's to give his life for the family so it's so much more than the power it's about the position and the love that God has it's supposed to be carried through that man and then the wife is supposed to carry and give back to the husband everybody's supposed to do their part and if we do the part then you know I think I'm not gonna say it's perfect because it's not perfect and I know I'm coming from a single person but just reading it today just encouraged me that you know if we do our part then everything will flow even when there's disagreement, there's not. Even when there's disagreement, there's a humility and there's a respect. This so I'll is stop there. This <laughs> is this is true. The concept, the precept, mm -hmm. is taking individuals, yes, male and female, giving them the overall perspective of being spiritual, mm -hmm. which demands unity, oneness. You cannot run any house in three or four different directions. That will never work. And any time you have either male or female trying to go their own direction, you have chaos. The word says, how can two walk together except they agree? Except they agree. Your assignment as a man, as a woman, is to learn how to agree with your companion. And you will not agree until you keep God in the forefront. Amen. Mm -hmm. Unity, oneness, and the demonstration was established in the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve. They were there to be one, which was a type of the church. We don't understand that God is married to the church. The church is destined to be his bride. Mm -hmm. But she has been empowered with authority. The female is not weak. she got power. Hello? But that's not what we're teaching. We're teaching biasness out of our ignorance. And the man is saying, I got the power. No, you don't. You left her out in the cold. You're acting unstable. When you get together, how many know what the body temperature of, of a human being is? 98.6. Do you know that you can take this human body into a condition where it's freezing? And if you would put these two bodies together at 98.6 by 2. That's good. And what do you come up with? <laughs> huh? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, you're, you're almost at 198 degrees in temperature. That's hot. 
And if, if you huddle up together, you can keep yourself warm in a storm when it's freezing. That's the purpose of unity. Oneness. Taking your resources and combining them together, not as an individual. That's a trick of the devil. That's a trick of the world to keep you isolated and separated. Right, right. It's true. There is no uh, individualism in salvation. That's, that's a figment of the imagination derived from satanic forces. Mm -hmm, mm hmm mm hmm the devil is a mass manipulator, and he does not want you to have unity in your house. Come on. Come on, son. He don't want unity in the church. He wants everybody to have an opinion. And God ain't concerned about your opinion. He said, I'm going to teach you how to be a slave first. And then I'm going to promote you into a servant. And after you learn how to be a servant, and you reach the point of whether you're, you're ready for the sacrifice, then I'm going to give you equality with me. Uh-oh, y'all didn't like that one, did you? Didn't y'all understand that you were designed to be like Jesus? Amen. If any man be in Christ, he becomes a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. He said, you're not only going to be my bride, you're going to succumb to the revelation that now I'm making an angel out of you. Hmm. And the Bible says in Genesis chapter number 6 that the sons of God looked down upon the daughters of men and desired to have them. Right, right. The sons of God, mm -hmm. the angels, left their first estate with their illusion just to be physical. Left their assignment. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm. Come on. Not knowing that this physicality was only designed to be temporary. That's good, Pastor. That's good. But to be with God would cause us to be eternal in the heavens with him. We better begin to recognize what our assignment is. And stop trying to be individual. You're a part of a divine plan. You're to be a member in God's clan, one of his heavenly creatures. But first, you've got to learn how to function here on earth. Got news for you. Don't get attached to nothing physical because you can't take none of it with you. Hello, put your hands together and give the Lord some praise. Amen. In the hands of the evangelist. God bless you, everybody. Aren't you glad you tuned in today? Aren't you glad that you came out today? God bless you. Wonderful word, outstanding word. God bless you, Pastor. We thank God for the Lord using you on tonight to bless the people of God. We are not going to hold you long. We do want to remind you that tomorrow is Wednesday, our fast day, so be fasting and praying. Amen. And if you have... Uh, I was reading in Isaiah chapter 58 about fasting and um, it's not they were fasting for the wrong reasons pastor they were fasting to to be seen but we have to understand that fasting is about breaking strongholds and breaking yokes so fast 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 and pray also on Thursday uh, we want to uh, remind you of our family prayer at seven o'clock I believe amen if I'm not mistaken that minister Sharon is our prayer leader so we want you to tune in and to come get a word of inspiration and then if you have any prayer requests you can go ahead and submit them and we will make sure they get to her and we're going to pray together as a family 
And then also we want to remind you on Sunday to get here on Sunday for our Sunday service at 11 a.m. Um, as an advance um Prayer request, excuse me, not prayer request, but announcement. We want to remind you on January the 28th, we've been announcing this and we're going to continue to announce it. We're excited that we are having our WIF program, Women in Total Health, and we will be having the finance session. Amen. How many want their finances to be blessed? I don't know about you, but I want my finances to be blessed. Hallelujah. And so come and get this information. Um, she might share some things that you already have her but that's okay because sometimes we need to be reminded that's why we keep coming to bible class that's why we read our, our bible every day so that we can be reminded of these things and not just to be reminded of them that we can put them into action and apply them so put that on your calendar join us at 12 noon. Let, let me drop this in there on you yes what you're going to learn if you pay attention to the uh, instructor when they come and trusting that they are in harmony and tune with the will of God. You have to be ready and willing okay. to plant a seed. Come on. Come on. Yes, sir. Hello? And God said, if you trust me to plant the seed that I give you, I will make that seed grow and it will cause you to prosper. Trust me. All the teaching is going to be surrounded by God. Mm -hmm. Trusting him and planting the seed of the word. Amen. The seed, the word makes everything else grow. That's right. Amen. 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 Go ahead and put, yes. <laughs> I, was, I, I was about to get to the brothers, but all right. <laughs> Deacon Coy is excited. So, brothers, 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 you're invited too. Amen. We want everybody to be blessed. Matter of fact, in the comments, everybody put plant a seed. Amen. 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 Plant a seed. In the comments, put plant a seed. And we have expectation for that seed. And, yes, the brothers are invited. So, we want this ministry to be blessed and your households to be blessed. Amen. So God bless you. Those are our immediate announcements. Um, be encouraged in the Lord. Please remember your weekly giving. Amen. We have four ways that you can give. You can give via cash app, via GiveLify, via PayPal. Um, our deacon is here to serve you. If you'd like to go ahead and put something in the basket, you can also send your offering and uh, mail it in to 5860 Market Street, San Diego, California. 92114. Amen. And we're going to give cheerfully. We're going to give bountifully. Amen. Because we expect God to do great things for us. So God bless you. Those are your immediate announcements. We love you. We love you. We love you. Have a blessed week. Be safe. And then um, we look forward to seeing or hearing you on the call on Thursday. Amen. And we'll go from there. God bless you, Pastor. All right. As we prepare for our dismissal. Oh, just real quick. I'm sorry. One more thing. One more thing. Um, as you know, as we already said, that for the WIF program, we will be having the guest speaker that's going to be coming from out of town. So we want to make sure that we are prepared to be a blessing. Um, they are flying in. And so we want to make sure that we are supporting the sisterhood um, with a financial blessing so that we can help um, handle those costs. It's not fair for just one, you know, for one person or two people to cover the expense that's not how it's supposed to be amen and we're all benefiting so we want to make sure that we all do our best amen to be a blessing so we want to put that in the back of your minds and you can give in advance or on that day or however but please we have a mind to be prepared to be a blessing amen so god bless you everybody thank you pastor all right as we bow our heads for dismissal heavenly father lord we thank you for your presence here tonight Pray, Lord, that this word that we have received just, just soak, Lord, and just saturate our essence, our being. My God, that we will begin to uh, glorify you in all that we say and all that we do. My God, help us, O oh God, to become what you have ordained for us to be and that you would receive your glory. My God, we ask these things in Jesus' precious name. And everybody said amen. Amen. Thank you, media God team. Bless you. God bless God you. Bless Thank you, you, Sister Jamie. Good night, everyone.